Hi everyone, today let's talk about the courant from Bach's first cello suite, the G major courant. The courant starts with a G major chord, uh, just like every other movement in the first suite. Courant means to run, running, um, and this is indeed a fast movement. Um, <laughs> two voices here, the one in green, the top voice, and the one in red. And so when you play, uh, try to differentiate those two voices. can think of the second voice as uh, as if it's in parentheses so in this movement it's quite easy to see what's going on harmonically um, and also how Bach deals with little motifs and changes them around the second half starts uh, as usual uh, with binary movements again with Bach uh, on the dominant, especially in major and uh, major key movements, so and uh, you will see that he comes back to the tonic, which is G major at the end of this movement. So this is a very very simple movement. Uh, if you are new to harmonic analysis, that will be a great uh, place to start. So we have an eight-bar phrase. Uh, from bar one to bar eight, <laughs> um, and here it is. So we're still in G major, as you hear, we ended on G, and this is the opening phrase. Then we're going to the middle section of the first part of this uh, movement. <laughs> And here is uh, the end of this movement. We are already in D, which is the dominant, um, etc. So this ends the first half. The second part of this movement starts on D, the dominant of G. And here uh, the opening. Uh, kind of statement, uh, if you will, is only four bars long. Here we have the middle of the second part. So. And a second part to the middle, so we're still in the middle of the second part of this movement etc and then the end of this movement the ending uh, starts in bar 36 so, um, and he uh, and here we are again as you hear in G major already so he makes uh, Bach makes his move from G major going to D major and back to G major. Now let's go back and look with more detail uh, at this movement and uh, use a magnifying glass to uh, try to explain the little things that are going on. In bar three, we have this upbeat anacrusis that is going um, uh, from top to bottom. So, so from C to F sharp. Uh, and the next bar, uh, which is bar four, uh, it is the opposite direction, and uh, I think you should um, bring this uh, gesture and be aware that the gesture is opposite. So, and uh, this will uh, not only clarify it in our minds and the minds of our listeners, but it should also shape how you color uh, your line, um, the direction of the lines. <laughs> So I uh, use opposite slurs for this to bring this uh, out more clearly. So I use up, down, and here, uh, down, up. So as you see, the up bow uh, helps us in leading into something uh, more. And 
and uh, the down bow helps us to recede perhaps into something a little less. Uh, and uh, there are certainly little details that make a um, uh, movement uh, come to life. There are three uh, cycles of fifths in this movement. The first one is in bar five. Um, so, the next cycle of fifths comes in bars 11 and 12. Uh, it's the same thing, just uh, fourth down. If you can hear, the, the color changed. So, four bar five, six, and then um, you can obviously interpret it as you wish. Uh, but I do find that there are, uh, there's for sure different uh, characters and colors for different keys. And you should find uh, how to differentiate uh, between those two cycles of fifths. And then we have the last cycle of fifths in bar uh, 39. And then we have the cadence. Now let's look at even smaller building blocks uh, that Bach uses. In bar five, we have uh, a little motif, uh, right, the downbeat of bar five, uh, and Bach uh, takes this little motif and um, inverts it, uh, changes it uh, in bar 14, for example. So here we go from C to A, and here we go from a, D to F sharp. So instead of going down, we're going up. Uh, and those are things that, yes, when we play on stage, we don't really think of those things. But when we practice, it really um, can be very beneficial to understanding how this movement is built. One more interesting aspect about this movement, it is the third beat that is heavy, uh, in addition to the first beat that is always heavy. So. Um, this is not true about every single uh, bar in the Quran, for sure. Uh, so we have to find where this works. Um, and if we look at the harmony, uh, that is a very helpful hint. So for example, in this movement, each uh, one of the first four bars uh, has one chord, one harmony. Um, <laughs> When we get to bar uh, five, this is bar five, you will notice that the harmony changes on the third beat of uh, each of those uh, bars. So, uh, a way to help to bring it out is to just sit a little bit more on that D. Okay, so, D, C. This is a cadence, and uh, in a cadence, typically every beat of the bar is emphasized. So to recap, the first bar is in one harmony, the second bar is in one harmony, the third bar is in one harmony, and the fourth bar is again in one harmony. The harmony changes on the third beat of each of the bars uh, following, uh, bar five and bar six. Bar seven is a cadential bar, and um, usually we take a little extra time or uh, a little more punctuation for those cadence bars. Uh, and um, uh, one way to find those cadence bars is um, they usually have a chord in them. Um, and uh, you can also feel that we are arriving at a point that we can rest. A uh, point that could be a little ending. So, uh, and uh, don't accent this G. And also, I would suggest breaking that chord. Not if you add the top after you play the the bottom. I, you just can hear both notes separately and together. The second half of this movement. Again, we see two voices. The one in green and the one in red. Um, and here a little time uh, because uh, we do finish that first statement and we're going on to the middle 
of that uh, second half of the uh, dance. <laughs> So the D sharp is leading us to E major. 425, we have a Neapolitan chord. Uh, how is it different than a non Neapolitan chord? Uh, it could have been like this. Uh, for example, um, but he didn't go to F sharp, he went to F natural. And so uh, we can um, bring out the color of the Neapolitan chord. Uh, and again, those notes in red should be emphasized. Be sure that you understand which uh, notes are the pillars of support here and which are not, which are the connecting notes, the passing notes, and those uh, connecting notes can be lighter and should be lighter. Uh, now the Neapolitan, here I like to um, alternate between closed A and open string A. You can experiment and see uh, what works for you. But I think it's more interesting to alternate and we know that Bach liked to do that because we have the fifth suite where we see uh, uses open string G and sometimes he uses the closed uh, fourth finger for example on the D. So uh, we know uh, that he liked to play with those colors. You, you can think of those two bars as one big bar, so one big scale, or you can divide uh, this long scale into two bars uh, by sitting a little bit on the more on the downbeat of 37. So there's many ways. Here we have another cycle of fifths. technique Bach uses here is uh, taking a gesture uh, that we usually uh, hear on a certain beat. Uh, for example, the gesture um, we hear in bar 5 on the third beat. Uh, the beginning of bar 39 will be this gesture. And again, this gesture. So, and then if we look at bar 41, this same gesture comes a, a bit early. Um, so uh, those gestures start with circle in red, and this is uh, nice to bring out and sit on the notes that are in red. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.